Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the datum line within FreeCAD. First of all, I'm within the part design workbench and the datum line can be found up here on our tool ribbon. Now this may vary depending on how large your icons are, but this is what it looks like, a simple blue line with two red dots either end. It can also be found over here on this drop down with the other datum tools. Datum lines allow us to create a point of reference for our geometry. We can use them as a center point for rotational geometry and grooves, as well as reference lines in sketches. So here I'm just going to create myself a simple cube, like so. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to deselect everything. I'm then just going to click on the datum line, and you'll see that we have a couple of things appear in our 3D view. First we have our origin planes, and then we have this slightly faded yellow or golden line which represents our datum. And currently that's placed at 0, 0 on the x, y axis due to the fact that we haven't selected any reference geometry. And then we have our parameters box to the left of our screen. Now this is similar to the datum plane, and if you haven't seen that video, you can click on the pop-up banner above. On this panel, we have our references, the attachment mode, and the attachment offset. You'll see under the attachment section, it says selecting. So if I go ahead and select this top line here, it will then input that information and move on to the next reference if we require one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a second attachment and that's going to be the bottom line of this cube. You'll then see that the attachment mode changes. However, we can cycle through these and select the one that best suits what we're trying to create. The bold one is FreeCAD's recommendation based on your reference selections. If we hover over the different attachments, this will tell us the combinations we can have. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in this as there are a few different combinations and meanings for each. What the attachment mode does is that if I change the previous geometry, such as the height of this cube, my datum line will stay with the references I've selected. In the offset box down the bottom, we can change the position or orientation of our line, depending on the geometry we're trying to create. To delete a selection, we simply click on our reference box, and we just hit the backspace on our keyboard. So just for this part, I'm going to show you one edge selected. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hide my origin point, and this is a sketch I created earlier. What we're going to do is we're going to take this sketch and we're going to create a groove on our cube. So I'm going to select sketch, click on our groove icon, and then over here on the axis, I'm going to click on the drop down and click select reference. I'm then going to select our datum line that we created, like so, and I'm then going to press OK. And you'll see how it is grooved into our cube and use the datum line as our reference. So you may be wondering, why create a datum line? Why can't I just select the edge directly from the cube? And that's absolutely right. You can easily select lines directly from your geometry and rotate patterns or grooves around them. However, I would say using datums is the best option for creating solid geometry that is reliable, especially if you're constantly changing previous operations. What about creating a groove where there's no selectable edge? In this case, we already have our groove set up, but I want to rotate around the center of this face. I go back into the datum line and I'll select this bottom line as a reference. So again, I click on our reference to and I select the line at the bottom of our cube. You'll immediately see that it's picked what it thinks to be the best option based on my selections. However, I want it running horizontally through this face. So I'm going to cycle through the modes. First principal axis, it seems to go through the cube from one face to another face. Second principle runs horizontally, and that's the one we're looking for. And our third principle runs vertically through our face. So I'm going to go back to the second principle axis, and I'm going to say OK. Not only has the groove followed where our data line has gone, but it's also created our groove around a reference point that originally wouldn't have been there. We can also use our data line for vertices. So in this case, the cube doesn't currently have a selectable edge going through our cube diagonally and so a datum line is perfect for this situation. I'll delete our previous groove and the sketch, and I'll double click back onto our datum line to edit the parameters. Our first box says selecting, and I'm just gonna click on this vertice on this corner right here. You'll see that it says attachment mode has failed. This is because I've selected the vertice and it doesn't like my second reference from the previous example. So I'm just going to click on our second reference and override it. I'm then gonna rotate my cube around I'm going to select the opposite diagonal corner, like so. You'll then see that our datum line is now going diagonally through our cube, passing through the two points that we selected. 
I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to create a polar pattern of our cube. So I'm going to select it in our model tree. And I'm going to come up here on our tool ribbon and click on the polar pattern. You'll see that a second cube has appeared. I want it to be rotated around our datum line reference. So I'm going to come over to here to Axis, click on the drop down, and I'm going to click on Select Reference. I'm then going to click on our datum line and press OK. You'll see that it is now rotated or patterned a cube around the datum line that we set as a reference. So that is one thing we can use them for to create relatively complex geometry on references that wouldn't usually exist. And now that we've created that geometry, let's say I want to change our datum line position. So I can double click on that. And let's say I want to change our axis rotation in the X by 10 degrees. You'll see that our datum line has changed. And when I press OK, our cube has updated, conforming to our reference line. Another thing we can use the datum line for is a reference while sketching. So I'm going to select the line I want to use as a reference and click the datum line tool. We can see that it's attached and I'd like to rotate the line around the X axis 30 degrees in the negative direction and click OK. I then want to create a sketch on this face, which will also allow me to use the angle of the line. At first, I can't select the line. I have to highlight it using the external geometry tool. You'll now see that it's possible for me to select. And so I'm going to sketch out some geometry, making sure my line points are in contact with the datum line. I want one vertical measurement as I want the height to be 10 millimeters. I can then close out of that and pocket that by five millimeters into the cube. If at any point I want to change the angle of my datum line, my sketch will automatically update, like so. Another example would be to use the datum line as a reference for sketches. Here I have a cone and I've created a simple sketch that I want to revolve off center of our main geometry. I'll click on the datum line and select this edge of our sketch as my reference. I'll click OK and now we have our reference line. I can select our sketch and select the Revolve tool up here on our tool ribbon. Similar to other examples, the parameters box will open, and on the axis dropdown, we click Select Reference, and then select our datum line. I say OK. And now that we've created that, I can manipulate my sketch, and the datum line will conform and follow our changes. Another example would be to have a sketch that is attached to a datum plane. Here I have a single sketch that has been revolved around this datum line. The datum line is still attached to the sketch. I then used a multi-transform to recreate it in four different positions. So what I can do is here, is I can manipulate the datum plane to move it 10 instead of 5. As I say OK to that, the datum line moves with the sketch, creating geometry that can be reliably manipulated without any issues. A similar example would be this one here, which has a similar layout, except I've used this fillet edge as my datum line reference. As you would expect, when I change the position of this datum plane to minus 10 and say OK, the line stays where it is, due to it obviously being attached to the fillet rather than our sketch. And this causes little issues like this. So what I'm saying is, just think about where you're going to place your reference points especially if you're going to be changing previous parts of the geometry like I did here with the datum plane. That'll be all for today's tutorial. Hopefully I've taught you something new that you can add to your FreeCAD tool belt. If you have any more information that you think might be beneficial to other FreeCAD users, please leave it in the comments down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and as always, have an absolutely epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.